Greetings and welcome to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy. So yesterday we had to split what I thought was going to be a single parter into a two parter. Uh, don't want to look too much into that other than uh, we had to deal with Damon Gant and trying to figure out what was going on with him uh, working in the crime scene of an old case and then hiding evidence. Uh, he took Emma away for some reason. We found her fingerprints on a piece of cloth. We don't know what the piece of cloth is to yet. And, uh, Gumshoe got fired. Uh, we had nothing to do with that. So now we're in the final trial of the third day. So February 25th, 9.47 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Uh, this is the defendant lobby, all right, but there's no defendant. Oh, excellent deduction there, Phoenix. I would not have known with the background. Although there is two guards, so, you know, you at least have them. I've been trying to reach Lana all morning. Where could she be? Probably in the bathroom? You never know, she might have had some really bad nachos last night. Where is Emma, for that matter? Almost seems as if something's been happening behind the scenes. Ah, Edgelord! You know, something's been happening behind the scenes. You already said that, though. And not in your normal voice. Yeah, shut up. Knowing you, I've already figured it out. And you've already figured it out. Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure you figured it out, too. Who the owner of the 777777 ID number is, that is? You know, I have a pretty strong hunch. That's not good enough. Looks like I'm not the only one who's figured it out. Yeah, you idiot. You know, the only reason this trial didn't reach a verdict yesterday is because there was still room for doubt regarding this ID record. If that number does belong to whom you suspect, then no doubt will remain. After all, he hasn't been officially charged with anything. True. Not yet. In any event, once all doubt has been removed from that list, I can call for a ruling. Five minutes, Shiro, and Chief Prosecutor Sky will be found guilty. Oh, you're gonna five minute me like, you, you know, Von Karma did in the last trial? Really? Friggin... What a jerk. But she didn't do it. I figured you'd say as much. That's why I came here, to hear what you have to say. Really? I knew it. You do care. Shut up, that's not what I mean. This is the first time you've ever done something like this. Anna's hiding something. And the only way we'll ever know the truth is to draw it out of her. The truth? Everything goes back to the SL9 end. Don't be stupid. Today's the last day of the trial. Hey, <laughs> he actually said the line. <laughs> don't be stupid. <laughs> Thank you, Edgelord. Phoenix, don't be stupid. Listen to him. Shut up, voice in my head. We don't have time to reminisce about the past. Also, stop talking to the voice in your head. It depends on you. Ugh, three dots, exclamation point. If she's found guilty, you'll lose your only chance to find out what really happened. Ugh, three dots. I'll think about it. See you in court, Shiro. And he vanished. This is it. If I'm ever going to find out what Chief Gant has on her, it's now. February 25th, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number 9. Blah, 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 number 9. Blah, 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 blah. Well, court is now in session to get, yo, a number 45. Huh? Large. What? Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. Defense is ready, Santa. That was a completely different game, different franchise, Santa. Yes, I know that. Shut up. The prosecution is ready, Santa. Normally, this is when the prosecution puts forth its opening statement. Uh, is something wrong with your voice? Question mark? Uh, a little bit. But before that, the police chief has a proposal to make. Chief can. I saw Nini appeared. 
I was here all the time. Invisible. Amazing. Morning, folks. How's everyone doing? Hey, Undy. Been back to the pool lately. Uh, no. I've been drowning enough as it is in my work. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a very funny one. That's a good one. Don't think I can top that. <laughs> Except, uh, you're an idiot. What? Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna put my finger. If you don't mind me asking, Chief, exactly what is this proposal of yours? For me to stare at you. Nana, that is to say, the defendant has asked me if she could speak directly to the court. She wants to what? Having heard what she intends to say, I feel she should be granted her request. In the end, it should have saved everyone a lot of time and trouble. Hmm, that doesn't sound good. Uh, what's this all about, defendant? I'd just like to make one simple request, and I'll be finished. Well then, what's your request? Santa, I'd like you to put an immediate end to this trial. Huh? I confess to all charges against me. On February 21st of this year, I murdered Detective Bruce Goodman in the underground parking lot of the prosecutor's office. No, Lana. No, Lana. I object to that. Okay, you can't. Santa, the defendant's claims do not change the defense plea. In that case, Mr. Cheryl, I'm no longer requiring your services. But Lana, Santa, I hereby forfeit my right to an attorney. Prosecution may lack direct evidence against me, but it has sufficiently proven its case through the testimony and circumstantial evidence. I would like you to render your verdict now, if you please. Hmm? Well, the defendant certainly has the right to self-representation. Her request is legally valid, although this is an unprecedented situation. Galloway. Indeed, it appears there is no further need to continue this trial. Even if Mr. Shiro may feel otherwise. Man, Santo, what's up with your voice? It got dried out before we had to do this session. Shut up. This can't be happening. It appears this time for the verdict has been arrived. Has been arrived? Shut up. This court finds the defendant. Objection! Objection? One moment, Santa. I'm gonna point my finger. Uh, Mr. Edgler. The prosecution has not yet proven the defendant guilty beyond reasonable doubt. Set the desk. Any ruling at this stage would certainly be premature. Come now, Lordy. I understand this is a difficult time for you. But why do you just... Why don't you just be a good little boy and keep your mouth shut, hmm? Hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna waggle my finger. <laughs> uh, you underestimate me. I'm amazing. 5,000 IQ. Oh, I see how it is. I don't think I care for your tone, Chief Gant. What? I said I don't care for your tone. Creating another fabrication to cover up your past mistakes. Sorry, but I'm no longer the naive little boy you would have me be. Ah, oh, three dots. With this sudden confession from the defendant, put my finger, it's obvious to me some kind of deal was struck behind the scenes. Some kind of deal, hmm? Not everyone operates as you do, Lordy. Huh, <laughs> three dots. Huh, <laughs> I thought so. Santa, the prosecution would like to change its first witness. Oh, to whom? As its first witness, the prosecution would like to call... Miss Emma Sky. Finger point. I request the court hears her testimony. Uh, hold it. Mr. Edgelord, I am exercising my right to self-representation. I don't think we need to contend- uh, I don't care what you think, Miss Sky. <laughs> Idiot. I still get to question whoever witness I choose. Dum dum. Ah, three dots exclamation point. The exposure of truth sometimes results in tragedy. However, I point my finger. No matter how tragic the truth may be, it would be an even greater tragedy 
to avert one's eyes from it. Mm. That was a good statement. Very well. The court shall grant the prosecution's request. That's okay with you, right, Chief Gat? Lordy, you live to regret this. Mark my words. Oof. Man. <laughs> uh, you don't scare me. Miss Emma Sky, please take the stand. Looks like Edward has decided to take the horse by the reins. Uh, at least he's not taking the reindeer by the horns. What? What? Uh, you're supposed to say pony. What? Never mind. Now then, witness, please state your name and occupation. Um, my name is Emma. Emma Sky. My occupation? I'm Lana's little sister, and I want to be a scientific investigator. Well, that doesn't mean that's your occupation. Your occupation would be high school student at the current time. Uh, yeah, what the narrator said. What? Never mind. Two years ago, I stole this piece of paper. What? That has been missing for two years? Sorry, Santa. Uh, you encountered the serial killer Joe Dark of the Joe Dark Killings. Is this correct? The piece of paper has vanished. Yes. I'm trying my hardest to forget about that, though. I'm sorry. Put my finger, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to recall those events one more time. Mr. Edgelord, please remember this trial concerns the murder of Detective Goodman. It is an incident that was resolved two years ago really all that relevant? Yes, it most certainly is. Ah, three dots. I guess I don't need evidence to say otherwise. No, no you don't. Three dots. Well, okay then. <laughs> Come on, dude. <laughs> you can object to that. <laughs> you sure gave, it fa gave in fast. No. Please testify about what happened to you two years ago. Ah. The trip to yesteryear has finally begun. No, that was only, you know... Yeah, shut up, idiot. What? Okay, I was like, it's bound to lead to the truth behind this trial. Ah, two years ago. I was waiting in my sister's office that day. A man came running in and took me hostage. Neil Marshall rescued me. But I'll never forget what I saw in that instant. An onion cut haired man. Just kinda really weird looking. The man raised up his knife and stabbed Mr. Marshall in the chest. Uh that's not right. It's a good thing you weren't harmed. Um hang on, 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 Broken tip was found, the victim's body belonged to the murderer, jo mm, no. It's not what I need. Uh... Stabbed in the back, there we go, that's what I want. Stabbed in the back, so... Unfortunately, we have to press that. I just needed to remember. It's a good thing you weren't harmed. You already said that. I just needed to re-clarify my voice. Yeah, it's really bad right now. Shut up. I passed out, I don't remember much. Hmm, that's understandable. However, please tell me, Mr. Edgelord, what does this testimony have to do with the defense, you know, Detective Goodman's murder? Yeah, three notes. Defense Goodman doesn't exist. Shut up. That will soon become apparent, Santa. I've got to admire him for his courage, considering he has no evidence. Very well, the defense may begin its cross-examination. Two years ago. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. Rescued me. Yeah, stab in the chest. Nope. He did not. Oh, come on, game. Are you serious that I have to press all of those statements? You're freaking garbage. Alright, well, we're gonna do a little bit of a skip, because I'm gonna go back and reload the file, because that's garbage. That's bull. There's no reason that I 
should not be able to object to that because she said stabbed in the chest and we already have evidence that proves he was stabbed in the back. That's not the same place. She's lying. Well, not necessarily lying, but, you know, she didn't get the facts right. So, whatever game, I guess I'm just five freaking steps ahead. So, be right back. Okay, and we're back. Yeah, I'm not going to take a, uh, a penalty just because the game decided that I was two steps ahead and it didn't want me to do that. So, let's see. New Mushroom directed me. Uh, I'll never forget what I saw that instant. Uh, can you tell us more about that? Miss Marshall jumped on Stark just then. The lights went out. The lights? It was just about that this time of year. There was a terrible storm going on. And lightning struck nearby. Excuse me, I hiccuped. Uh, can you not hiccup in the courtroom, please? That's not really something I can control, but okay. So the electricity went out? Wait a minute. If it was pitch dark in that room, you shouldn't have been able to see anything, right? Right, but just then lightning flashed again outside. That sudden flash left an unforgettable image of the scene in my mind. I see. I told the detective about what I saw then. A detective? Yes, Detective Goodman. He was in charge of the case. Detective Bruce Goodman. Victim. Uh, hear more. So, you spoke with Detective Goodman about this two years ago? Yes, that was so scary about the... That's what's so scary about this trial. I have this piece of paper. And you told Detective Goodman about what you saw? Yes, but at the time, the words just wouldn't come out. That's why I drew a picture. Picture? Yeah, I think she mentioned that before. Hang on, let's check something real quick. Can I check this? Uh... Ooh. Oh. Oh, uh, oh, no. Oh. 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 You're drawn on the back of this evidence. This is magic marker. I've got a very bad feeling about this. Are you sure about that? But okay. Uh. Well, Mr. Cheryl, have you heard enough? Uh, ask about the picture. This picture the witness drew. I believe it has a very important meaning. Objection. Uh, objection? I'm gonna point my finger, but the list of evidence I was given two years ago didn't contain a picture. Ah, witness, would you mind if we added this statement to your testimony? Yes, Santa. I drew a picture of that scene once, but it seems to have been lost. Uh, no. We have it right here. Point my finger. Mr. Edgelord, this little girl put all her heart into drawing that picture. Stop that, just Point my finger, and yet you would insist on denying its existence? Uh, uh, the desk? Hey, I'm not the bad guy. I mean, kind of are. I mean, at least you were for the first three trials, and then you were uh, the client in the fourth one. And now you're kind of the good guy, but I wouldn't really say, you know, you're all that good. All I'm saying is that as the prosecutor for that case, I wasn't handed such a picture. Finger point. That may well be. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Behold. Uh, he said behold. Ah, uh, this is uh, the evidence list for the SL9 incident. Yep. Please turn it over, Santa. Turn it over? God, how do I turn it over? I turned it over. We didn't animate it. Really, Santa? You don't know how to flip over a piece of paper? Shut up. We'll put more than just simple coal in your stocking. It'll be red hot coal. What is this? Whoa, sideways picture. Yes. Yes, what is that? Hey, that's it. That's the picture I drew. Where blah 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 that picture you drew. Where blah blah blah. Dang it. Two men appear to be wrestling here. Uh, objection? What's the meaning of this? 
wrestling? What? Were you know, were you at an event like WWE, which is trademarked and copyrighted and not sponsored and don't ever want to be? Put my finger. What are you doing with that list? Me. Only the prosecutor in charge should have access to this list. Ah. These lists. They're... They're different from each other. What? It would appear, Mr. Eichler, that the evidence list you were handed two years ago was incomplete. These two lists fit together to form one. You can see the marks here where they were torn apart from each other. So you see, Mr. Edgelord, it's quite obvious what happened. Uh, no it isn't. Two years ago, only half of the evidence in that case ever reached you. What? What? Blah, 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 blah. He said what? Blah, blah, blah. Order! Order! But, Miss Sky, why did you draw your picture on the back of such an important list? Because that's what Detective Goodman handed me in the questioning room, Santa. Oh. Uh, so... That's kind of weird. Why would you give her such an important item for her to draw on? Especially in Marker. Like, that ruins the whole list. Whatever. Wait a minute. If this list was torn in half, then that means... Stop the desk! Santa! All right, Mr. Churl. Your eyes are bulging from your head. Uh-huh. <laughs> Among others. Oh, uh, no, that's inappropriate. Shut up. Uh, I have this piece of paper that I stole from Edward. Uh, how dare you? Freaking Pepsi jerk. The evidence list was torn in half. Put my finger, then there might be more of the drawing on the back of Mr. Edgeworth's list. Uh, three dots exclamation point? Yes, that's quite conceivable, Mr. Edgelord. It's possible. I have the piece of paper. Let's see. Uh, 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 no. Is something wrong? Have you learned to flip over a paper? Yes, and I hate it. Do you even have to ask? <laughs> oh, it's so mad. Sorry, Santa. I freaked out. I have the piece of paper. There is indeed something drawn on the back of my list. I put my finger. That, that thing. What? Oh. <laughs> oh, I see. He yeah, has three dots. That, that's, that thing. That thing that was dancing in the evidence room. Clearly. This act of vandalism is the work of a certain chief of detectives. I guess he was out of scrap paper? Uh, three dots. <laughs> okay, list of evidence in the SL9 incident. Half of this list was found in Gant's desk. Wait, it was torn in half vertically? Uh, I figured it would have been stapled together, but whatever. Evidence list restored and updated to the court records. Cool. Great. Very well, witness. Will you please testify about this picture you drew two years ago? Uh, can I look at that real quick? Oh. Uh. Huh? Why is the blue badger part of the drawing? Ah, whatever. Anyways. Uh, three dots. Huh? Oh, yes, sir. Santa. What's wrong with Emma? She seemed to be thinking about something when she was looking at the picture. Maybe because she actually drew it? Question mark? Ah, whatever. This is the picture I drew two years ago. The flashes of lightning were so bright, all I could see were shadows. After that, I must have fainted. This picture shows exactly what I saw in that instant. Uh-huh. To think a flash of lightning could burn such an image in your mind. I mean... Have you ever actually seen a lightning strike, Santa? I have. It was literally ten feet from me. And it will never go away. I still have my fur standing up to this day because of it. What? Shut up, narrator! Okay. Uh, thanks to that, though, she was able to show us exactly what she saw. Well, I don't see any contradictions here. 
This clearly shows D Joe Dark about to murder Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Eh, I mean, about to is different than actually, sir. What? Never mind. Eh, yeah, three dots. The events may now begin at Sox examination. Objection. Oh, I thought Edgeward was gonna object. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. This is the picture I drew. Okay, picture drew two years ago. Flashlight, it was so bright, all I could see was shadows. After that, I must have fainted. This picture shows exactly what I saw in that instant. Uh. What? I'm gonna press on that real quick, just to see if she'll say anything. No, stop the desk. Sorry for asking so many times, but are you sure you drew exactly what you saw? Of course. This is exa the exact scene. And it wasn't influenced in any way from your talks with the detectives. Objection! Uh, objection. Stop the desk. Are you insinuating we somehow manipulated her memory, Shiro? No, no. Of course not. Calm down, Edgelord. Better watch out, or he might find some way to cut my salary. I mean, you probably could easily do that. I drew this picture before I heard anything from the detectives, so I don't think anyone's story would have influenced me. Mr. Shiro, stop hassling the girl. This very rude. Is there any something that's bothering you about this picture? Huh? Oh, well, uh... Yeah, three dots. That's strange. Claims is exactly the scene that was printed in her mind. And yet, there's clearly a contradiction here. Uh huh. Well, maybe now I can present the autopsy? Thank you. Such a desk. Hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I have this piece of paper. Yeah, he stole it. No! With this picture, the witness drew. Contains a blatant contradiction. What? But I still remember it just like it was yesterday. I mean, it could have been yesterday. If two years ago. Shut up, that, that's not what I mean, dum dum. Ah, uh, Mr. Shero, stop being stupid. What? Never mind. Perhaps it would be faster if you simply pointed out this contradiction for us. What part of this picture contradicts the autopsy report? Uh, I guess here. Slap the desk. Uh, I think it's uh, this part here. Hmm? I don't see what's strange about that. It's because the drawing stinks. Wow, really? That's what you're gonna go with? Uh, really? That's what you're gonna go with? Uh, jerk. Mr. Shiro, how could you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the exhibition isn't cool. Should warrant the death penalty. Ow. Well, I mean... <sighs> okay. Guess he means I shouldn't shift the blame to others. Yes, well, so long as the defense has learned to suss it. We're gonna take another look. Okay. I... Wait, what is that? That's not a knife. Take that! Stop the disc. The contradiction, of course, lies here. I have this piece of paper. Take a look at the knife in the man is holding. If you look closely, you can see its tip is broken. Well, how do you know it's broken? How do you know it's just not a flathead knife? Could be a screwdriver. Or, you know, could be a sharp square piece of glass? I don't know. In any case, it, you can't say that the tip of the knife is broken, just from a drawing. Even I don't have to look closely to see that, Mr. Shiro. But Mr. Shiro, look at the evidence. See the murder weapon? Its tip is broken too. But that was broken after it stabbed him. Oh. Yeah, that's right, you're dumb, Emma. If I recall, the tip of the knife was found broken off in the victim's body. It was the conclusive piece of evidence that proved Joe Dark was the murderer. I'm afraid it's not so simple, Emma. Objection! Uh, objection. Slap the desk again. And where, pray tell, could you possibly see a problem? It's obvious, really. 
Uh, the victim suffered a single stab wound to the back. Slapped to death. The victim was only stabbed once. Then the murder weapon should not yet be broken. Ah! What's the meaning of this? Uh, objection! Slapped to death freaking again. Perhaps the knife was broken before, Paul? Uh, no. Stop slapping dust. Sorry, but I'm afraid that's not possible. See this piece of paper? I will steal that back. The tip of the knife was found inside the victim's body. It's not the desk. If it was broken before Paw, it couldn't possibly wind up there. Ah, that's right. But what does this mean? Objection! Slap the desk further! The tip of the knife was undeniably discovered within the victim's body. Put my finger, the only possible explanation is the witness's memory is mistaken. Uh, that's why I asked her so many times if she was sure she remembered it correctly. I believe you were annoyed at the time. But she was sure she remembered correctly. Uh, but there's no other way to explain this inconsistency. Man, we're just gonna keep objecting all day, aren't we? Not so fast, Mr. Edgelord. There is another explanation. Have you forgotten already? About a little something called falsified evidence. Uh, you're treading on thin ice, Shiro. Better watch it. I'll give you diet soda. Ugh. That's just worse than water. Yeah, exactly. All I'm saying is that this broken knife tip might be the piece of evidence that was forged. Can't deny the possibility. Uh, no. Uh, he's right. Order. 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 Are you saying... No, excuse me. Are you saying the investigation really was corrupted? Santa? What were you doing? I had, I had something stuck in my teeth. Sh shut up. I had me a taco. Oh. Please allow me to once again go over the events that took place the day of the murder. Wait, how do you know? You weren't there two years ago. The police department and the prosecutor's office were holding a ceremony that day. After receiving the King of Prosecutors Award at the ceremony, Neil Marshall questioned Joe Dark about, you know, along with Damon Gant. He also questioned him about Damon Gant. It was really awkward. During his questioning, Joe Dark fled the room. Prosecutor Marshall chased after him and was killed by Dark. It is my belief that somewhere in the story, there is a lie. Namely, all of it. Hmm. All of it, you say? I... I'm not lying. The man really was holding up a broken knife. Uh, three dots. If that's true, then there's no other way around it. I'm gonna put my finger... This could not have been the actual murder weapon. Uh, three dots, six mesh points. There must have been another broken knife. What are the chances of there being two broken knives? Another broken knife, besides Joe Dark. Could there have been one? Uh, there is another one. I know exactly what it is. The witness is, the, is adamant about the accuracy of what she saw. It can't just be explained away by a simple observational error. Mr. Shiro? It's at the desk. In that instant, Emma really did see a broken knife. I assume, then, that you have some information about this other broken knife. If so, please feel free to enlighten us. The murder weapon was already broken prior to the murder. There's only one way. Take a look at this. Here's the real murder weapon. Take that! The answer lies in the past. Two years in the past. Right here inside this picture. Ta-da, it's the trophy. Why would the trophy be allowed to have the knife separate from the shield? That doesn't make any sense. But okay. Uh, this is a picture of the awards. Uh! What is it, Mr. Edzelord? What was with that scream? Uh, it's the broken murder weapon. <laughs> I'm mad now. Yep. Notice the award picture Marshall is holding. Yep. That's a broken knife. Stop the desk. As we earlier concluded, the knife in the drawing was not Joe Dark's knife. 
that being the case, point my finger, the knife the witness saw was in all likelihood from this award. Blah, 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 blah. How do you detach it? Blah, 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 blah. Order, order, order. Neil Marshall was awarded King of Prosecutor that day. As an award, he was given this broken shield and knife. When he chased after Joe Dark, he pulled out this knife. Being a prosecutor, he did not carry a pistol. Point my finger, this broken knife was the only weapon he had in his in this dangerous situation. Objection! But that that can't be Oh, and why not, Mr. Edgeford? Because if the King of Prosecutor War knife was a murder weapon, point my finger, then the murderer and the victim would be reversed. What do you mean? Except the desk idiot. I mean, this man raising a knife would have been Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Oh. Oh. But the prosecutor was the one who actually died. That's true. What's going on here? Uh oh. I think uh, Emma might have attacked someone that she shouldn't have, and that person was Neil. Uh oh. That's a problem. It seems we have a problem, and the narrator figured it out. It seems Mr. Shiro has been a bit too eager to jump to conclusions. Hold it. Wait. I, I remember now. I remember everything. Witness? Mr. Hedford. What is it? Could you show me your evidence list again, please? The, uh, his list? The one with that picture scribble on the back? Well, yeah. Uh, three dots. I knew it. This picture. I'm the one who drew it. Uh, what? Uh, you drew that? Oh, well, yeah, it, it had the exact same scribble markings as the other one. That's right. The exact same scribble markings. The list wasn't torn in half at the time I drew this picture. Uh-huh. All this time I've been trying so hard to forget. I must have locked this part away deep inside me. Perhaps it would be best if we added this to the witness's testimony. Would you please tell us what you've recalled, Miss Sky? Yes, Santa. Uh, first the knife mix-up and now the blue badger? Uh, this should be interesting. Okay. When I saw that man raise the knife, I panicked and rushed over towards both of them. I think I, I knocked away the man with the knife. Just then, there was another flash of lightning, and that's when I saw the blue badger. He wasn't in the room, but I'm sure I saw his shadow. Oh. I know exactly what she saw. I think she saw this. Which was upside down? Because that would be the way the shadow would look if... Yeah. Okay, well, whatever. Those are certainly unusual. Objection. Uh, objection. Set the desk. Try impossible. Put my finger. The chief of detectives hadn't even designed him until this year. That would mean he didn't even exist two years ago. Yes, well, the defense may now begin its... Uh, hold it. Stop. Please, do not pursue this any further. Anna, what are you doing? What's the meaning of this? Please remain seated in the defendant's chair. But you can't do this. I've already confessed to the crime. Why can't you just leave it at that? Chief Prosecutor Sky, shut it. Exclamation point. Yeah, that's what I thought. You've already come this far. It's too late to turn back. Silence. The defense will now begin its cross-examination. Bailiff, please detain the defendant. Seems we're finally getting to the core of the matter. Man, Lana freaked out. Alright. Uh, well... Let's see. Saw the man raise the knife. 
I uh, panicked and rushed towards both of them. I think I knocked away the man with the knife. Uh, okay, just then there was a flash of lighting, and that's when I saw the blue badger. I went in the room, but I'm sure I saw his shadow. What? How do you... What? His shadow? So you mean you didn't actually see his face with its winning smile and all? That's right, but I still remember it. He had three creepy horns. Uh, objection. This is pointless. That thing couldn't have been possibly ex you know, couldn't have possibly existed two years ago. I'm gonna slap the dust so quick that no one will notice. What? The witness must be mistaken. Uh no. That may well be, but uh stop the test can put my finger. That's what's important is what we caused her to think she saw what she did. Uh uh, what? Oh, and I suppose you have an explanation? If so, then by all means, please tell us what this shadow really was. What was it Emma saw when that lightning flashed? Who is this blue badger, really? I know. The blue badger hadn't even been dreamt up when Emma drew this picture. Yet she certain she saw its shadow. Stop the desk. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Felines and canines alike, dragons, snakes, and birdies. Some, uh, some turtles. What? It is the defense's belief that on that fateful day two years ago, there indeed was something that looked similar to the blue badger. Put my finger, something that is now sitting in this very room. Mr. Shiro? In this room? Very well, Mr. Shiro. What is it that the witness saw in that instant? Please show us this mysterious blue badger look-alike. The unstable jar. Stop the desk. The mysterious blue badger was in fact this. But that's... Uh, what exactly is that? Come on, Santa. Really? I believe it's some sort of jar. Well, Mr. Shiro, that doesn't look anything like the blue badger. Indeed, it doesn't. As it stands now. It's just a plain jar. However, what if we were to change our viewpoint? Our viewpoint? You mean, like, not be bigots and look at, you know, transsexuals and gay people as terrible people, but actually as good people? And that we're the real bad people? Santa. You're going too far. No, oh, you're right. Shut up. I've got to show them the correct angle to look at this. Uh, rotate? Not that. Uh, ro ro tate. Shoop. Shoop. Ha! Uh, I don't know if that's correct. But, uh, I'm gonna go with that. that. This isn't right. I've got to make it look more like a- Oh, come on! Wow, really? I had to do that five different times, five different ways, five different angles. And for some reason, it wouldn't accept that, even though I knew that was the correct angle. Because I was off by, like, a centimeter. They got pissed off about it. Come on, game. There's no reason for it to be that finicky. For it to be that precise. It's so dumb. Ugh. Well, here it is, finally. Is this a miracle or what? Uh, you sound kind of pissed off. Yeah, I am. No one can possibly deny this jar resembles, you know, this jar's resemblance to the Blue Badger. No! It can't be! I finally did it! Order! Order! The defense has proven its claim. The mysterious Blue Badger witnessed on the day of the crime was actually this. Objection! Although we have enjoyed Mr. Shiro's dramatic performance, one question remains. Set the desk. Do we have any more soda? Uh... Maybe? Good. What's your point? 
What do you mean? So that badger thing was actually just the jar? Put my finger, that doesn't change anything. Uh, I mean, kind of. I'm afraid that's where you're wrong, Mr. Edward. You see, it's at the desk. This changes everything. Indeed. Very well then. Please tell us. What difference now that we know the witness saw this jar? Uh... Location, the murder weapon, the murderer. Well, it's definitely... Uh... That doesn't make any sense. But why would it be the murderer? And it's definitely not the murder weapon. But I guess it would be the location? I'm not too sure about that, but... Okay. Allow me to take these in turn. At the moment of the murder, the witness saw this jar. At a very specific angle, might I add, Mr. Shiro? Yes, well, knowing this, where could she have seen this jar? Where? I have this piece of paper. Stop! Get that back! The location of the jar is shown in a picture taken on the day of the crime. It's on a shelf in the office of Damon Gant. Uh, objection, it's not the desk, but the body is found lying near Lana Sky's desk. The witness testified so herself. Objection, it's not the desk. Yes, and it is these two facts that, are re that reveal what actually transpired. You see, the struggle between Dark and Marshall did not take place in Lana Sky's office. Put my finger, it happened on the other side of the room in Chief Gant's office. Objection! Uh, objection. Are you implying the murderer moved the victim's body? From Damon Gant's office to Lana Sky's office? I mean, I don't see why that wouldn't be a problem. Come on. How do you not propose that? There's like a fit, you know, five to ten minute gap before anyone found them. Uh, anyways. Yes. Why would he do that? There's no reason. To cause confusion. Exactly. Uh, exclamation point. There wasn't a reason he wouldn't have gone through the trouble. The only logical conclusion is that there was a reason. Uh, excuse me, what? I'm lost now. Uh, do you know what the reason was, Mr. Shiro? Uh... I guess I finally figured it out. So this is why Lana tried to stop the trial. It's too late to quit now, though. Please recall the witness's testimony. She said she knocked away the man who was holding up the knife. In the next instant, the jar was hit and, a fl and flew through the air. Which is kind of weird, because you'd think it would just fall on the ground. Now tell me, could I have sent the jar flying? That would have to have been the impact the man made when he knocked into the wall. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, felines and doggos alike, shut it, we get it, you're an idiot, move on. If I may draw your attention to this picture once more. Look at this photograph. Every time it makes me laugh. And you also get copyright strikes, so shut it. If the man was knocked in the direction of the shelf the jar was sitting on, what would have hit? Uh, uh. A suit of armor, holding a very sharp and dangerous looking sword. Yes. And since the man who was knocked into the armor was carrying a broken knife, it would have had been Neil Marshall wielding the knife of the prosecutor trophy. No! Mr. Shiro, you can't be thinking. Yes. There is another possibility of what actually transpired in that room. Another possibility? Another possibility. Slap the desk. Of course, the perpetrator would have had no idea. But nevertheless. Your thoughts? I don't know if I can go through with this. You better not. I don't have my soda. We're just gonna have to wait on that, Santa. Mr. Shiro, what's the matter? If events took place as the defense theorizes, then the outcome is obvious. In that moment, assuming the man Emma Sky knocked away was actually Prosecutor Neil Marshall, 
Ugh. Yikes. And got super quiet. With a lot of whiteouts. You mean... Mr. Marshall died because of me? Oops. No. And she's down. Good job, Shiro. You made a little girl cry and also pass out from intense trauma. C congratulations. You're the biggest jerk around. All right, Edgelord, calm down. I never imagined your testimony would lead to this. So it was the witness who took the victim's life. And then proved so with her own testimony. This is unprecedented. Unprecedented. Objection! What? What are you saying? I'm sorry, Miss Skye, but given the circumstances... Joe Dark murdered Prosecutor Marshall. How can you think it was Emma? How dare you try to pin the crime on her? Imagine that coming from you. Ah, uh, exclamation point. If you recall, it was you who admitted to forging evidence two years ago. Put my finger, there's a reason you moved Prosecutor Marshall's body. It was to keep anyone from else from finding out about what Emma did, wasn't it? I assure you, Mr. Edgelord, I have no idea what you're talking about. If you hope to have anyone believe your insane allegations, I'm afraid you're going to have to prove. Or have to have proof. And you're going to have to prove it with that proof. Or proving. Proof positive. What? Never mind. Tell me. Do you have any conclusive evidence that provides proves my sister killed Neil Marshall? Evidence? Uh, kind of, yeah. I'm willing to bet you don't. Yes, it certainly would be difficult to prove this witness evidence. If we don't have evidence, then we'll have to rely on testimony. I'm afraid that won't work in this case. Both parties involved in the incident are dead. Uh, 3.6, how much point? Certainly can't get dead people to testify. This has all been a wild goose chase from the beginning. Eh, goose is disgusting. I would rather turkey. What? Never mind. <laughs> I'm gonna waggle my finger. <laughs> uh, touche, Miss Guy. Of course. That only leaves us with one possibility. Uh, three dollars exclamation point? You mean there's still another possibility? What do you mean, Mr. Edgelord? I mean the possibility that the victim has left us a message. For better or for worse, Mr. Marshall did not die instantly. He may have left behind the name of the person who took his life in one manner or another. It's kind of weird that you would write down the name of someone, even though you're trying to protect... Why would you write down that name? Why would you bother with it? It's like, you could just not have done that. You know you were trying to protect her. There's no need for you to say, oh, she did it, you know, even though I was trying to save her. It's like, well, then just don't admit it. Say it was an accident. Or, you know, write accident. You know, if you had the time to write Emma, you had the time to write accident. That's... that's impossible. Well, Mr. Shiro, this is the only possibility left to you. A message from the deceased. Does such a message exist? Gotta think back to the court record. The real murderous name that the victim may have left behind... Um... I don't know. Yeah, I guess technically it exists. Dark Rain Saint uh, must be cherry juice race from the incident two years ago. Only the fragment found in Chief Gant's office still has lines remaining on it. Uh, I think, yeah, we can go ahead and say it's in the evidence. Stop the desk. This message from the deceased is already in our possession. Mr. Shero, 
Will you stop at nothing to prove my sister a murderer? <laughs> I'm gonna waggle my finger. Do not be mistaken, Miss Guy. Three dots, exclamation point. Put my finger. Our purpose is not to accuse Emma of any crime. There is only one thing we need to see. The truth. It's not the desk, no matter how painful it may be. Now then, Mr. Shiro. Please show us the piece of evidence that conveys a message from the deceased. Take that! Uh, it, the, this is the message left by the deceased. This is that blue badger from before, right? Oh, is he going to just speak the killer's name? If that thing could, I'm sure it would. It's like everyone's forgotten this is just a jar. Uh, a message was left here, on the surface of this jar. What do you mean? If you look closely, you can see a faint trail of cherry juice on this jar. It looks like someone wiped the uh, cherry juice away. Three dots. Yes, but notice, for some reason, the cherry juice on some of the fragments was not wiped away. Yes, there is a line here, drawn in cherry juice. So, what you're saying is these dots were once lines? Prosecutor Marshall did not die instantly. He used the few precious moments left to him to leave behind a message. One that someone apparently wiped away, but cherry juice must have seeped into the jar when the lines changed direction. Stop the desk? Precisely so. All we need to do is connect these points, and the victim's message will be apparent. No. Mr. Cheryl, it's time to go back to kindergarten and draw on the lines and the dotted lines. What? Never mind. What kind of message did the victim leave for us? Santa? I believe these charity stains will reveal us the answer. Got to connect these dots to make letters. There's only one thing the victim would have written given the circumstance. His murderer's name. Uh, how, what? How, excuse me? Ah, here we go. Oh, I guess I can't go that way. Ta-da! Dun dun dun! It's a different attorney's duty to. Pr it's a defense attorney. It's also a different attorney's duty because you know, it's not our duty. Duty. Stop it! That's annoying and immature. Defense attorney's job to prove their client's innocence. That's why all I've been thinking about. Is saving Lana. After all my efforts, I never thought it would turn out like this. Emma. So, this is the final message Prosecutor Marshall left behind? More whiteouts? And silence? Why is everyone silent? It's very annoying. Of all people, she may not have meant it, but in the end, the one who took the victim's life was Emma Sky. Dramatic! Silence. See, Lordy, can't say I didn't warn you. Oh, great, this douche. Chief Gant, you douche. Do you understand the implications of what you've done? What? That's not how you pronounce that word? Shut up, it's a different voice. What? What are you talking about? Two years ago, Joe Dark was sentenced to death. He was convicted because he was his, of his final murder. I believe you were a prosecutor in that case, were you not? Ick. Yes, Ack. Yes, Lordy. Because of you, an innocent man was sentenced to death. Not only that, 
but you use forged evidence to ensure it is conviction. I mean, no one said that he was really innocent. We already had evidence that he killed five people beforehand and turned himself in. But because you were so bent on trying to label him a serial killer, he ran away because that's a harsher sentence than accidentally killing several people and freaking out. He could have just claimed insanity and gotten probably a better sentence than whatever you were going to give him. But, you know, because you're evil and all. Yeah, the narrator's right. Yeah. I, I object to that. Stop the desk. Joe Dark really was a serial murderer. That's undeniable. Well, not true. It's necessarily. He, he accidentally ran someone over. Then the person that witnessed him run that person over had to be silenced because he freaked out. And then another person witnessed that murder. And, you know, as we said, it just goes on and on and on up until the last person where he finally decided, okay, I just need to be put to prison because, you know, I've done too much. Which is stupid because you would think after the first one you would be like, well, I better go talk to the police. But nope, he decided to just uh, try and justify his accidental reasons, but whatever. What are you doing mumbling over there? Stop it. You're wasting valuable time. I'm afraid that's not important. Didn't you know? We aren't defenders of justice. Yeah, you are, and that's the whole... Man, you are a douche. What? We're merely keepers of the law. Sentencing a man to death is no light matter. Even if there wasn't any cover up or evidence for it. Ultimately, the responsibility falls on the prosecutor in charge. Huh. Exclamation point. I don't think it should fall solely on him. It should also fall on the defense and the judge at that point. But I would say that because you're the one who gathered the evidence, it's your fault that they came to that conclusion. So, you're wrong. Despite what anyone may say, this fact cannot be denied. Chief Gant's evil. His name is a demon. What's going on in the posture down? They might have sent an innocent man to death. How can they be just be standing there like it wasn't at the fault? Order! 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 Stop it! Silence in my courtroom. Okay. I still don't have my soda. The gavel's pounding fell on deaf ears. Unable to settle the crowd, the judge declared a recess. Well, I mean, if the crowd couldn't be settled, how do you declare a recess? Does the bailiff have to call in backup and force everyone out of the courtroom? I mean, at that point, that means that uh, all of the... What do you call it? Uh, I forgot what they're called. Uh, the people who are actually judging them, not the prosecutors and not the attorneys, not the defendant. Uh, well, it'll probably come to me later, but anyways. So, they would have to swap out all those people and find new people to do actual, uh, actual verdicts to the crime, or to the, yeah, to the crime, or to the, the trial. Because otherwise, you know, they're all going to be biased. They're going to be freaking out. They're going to be mad. They're going to try and do everything that they can to say that either Edgelord is wrong or that the police is wrong or that the judge is wrong. And, yeah, that's a whole situation you don't want to be in. That's a big problem. At that point, they need the feds to show up. Anyways, and it, uh, where this trial is headed, no one knows. Right down the tube. Right down the crap. Right down the toilet. Right down the gullets of the buzzards outside my window. Anyways, I guess that means uh, that'll be the end of part one. That actually wasn't as long as I expected it to be. I figured that was going to take, like, you know, well over an hour, but... Obviously, part two is where the real juicy grid of the situation comes into play. So, uh, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Link in the description below for when part two comes out. Uh, yeah, this has been a bit crazy. We'll take a 
two hour break, maybe three hour, whenever this upload, you know, the next one uploads. But regardless, stay safe, take care, and we'll see you in the next session.